Well, hello and welcome back. Today's video is just a short update on the Coco 2. Uh, you might remember I recently acquired this computer and uh, have been doing a little bit of work on it. Uh, I had to fix the keyboard and now I'm ready to go ahead and do some upgrading in terms of memory and adding extended color basic. Before I get started though, I wanted to be sure to thank Boise Pete for helping connect me up with this Coco 2. And this is a, going to be a great machine to upgrade. This has a, a system board revision 202-61044, which has a lot of advantages in terms of upgrade, and I'll go over a few of those as I work on the machine. Well, after spending a lot of time fixing the keyboard membrane for this machine with a circuit pen, I want to be sure that I'm very careful in pulling the keyboard ribbon and don't damage all of my hard work. Also, something that I really like about this particular board revision is you might notice that there are a couple of different ways to expand the RAM. Uh, one way is to just put a pair of uh, 4x64K RAM chips in, but there's a second option, which is to plug on a daughter board where I can use uh, 1 by 64 k RAM and just use 8 chips. Um, there's a lot of flexibility to be found with this board. So for the RAM upgrade on, on my system here, it's going to be very easy because I have a pair of socketed uh, 4416 chips that I just need to pull out and I'll be replacing those with a pair of NEC 41464 chips that I have in stock. I'm always really glad when I don't have to do uh, desoldering of chips off of PCBs. I'm always a little worried that perhaps in the removal of the chip that I'll do some kind of damage to the board and the traces, although I'm not super afraid to do that. Uh, it's always a joy to me when all I have to do is to pop a chip out of a socket. The other thing that needs to be done to upgrade this system from 16K RAM to 64K RAM, uh, besides just installing the chips, is there's a jumper on the board, I think it's identified as J6, that you have to bridge in order to allow the system to see all 64K. Now this is specifically for the 202-61044 revision of the system board. Uh, I realize that there are other boards that may have a different configuration or the jumpers uh, identify differently when you upgrade the system to 64K. Well, once the jumper is set in, at J6 and the two new RAM chips are installed, it will be time to connect the system up and give it a test to see if we're seeing all of our memory. Uh, I always also like to remind you that with the Coco, if you have the case apart, there is some high voltage around the power supply, uh, and even though this one has a metal shield around it, it's always uh, important to work cautiously when you have the presence of that uh, AC line voltage. With the system all back together, it's time to turn it on and take a look and see if we have the right amount of memory and you'll also notice that I am still using the RF output from this system. I have not done a composite or video mod to this yet. And there's the amount that we want to see, 31015. This is the amount of the 64K we've installed that BASIC can actually see. All right, the next thing that we need to do is to replace the ROM in this system. Uh, again, this is a really easy chore with this particular system board revision. It is uh, already socketed with a 28-pin socket. Uh, the basic that's in here is color basic 1.3, and it's on a 24-pin ROM. And I'll be replacing that with a 28-pin ROM. I'll be using a 27C128, and I'll have both the color basic and extended color basic on that ROM image. Because the ROM is a little large, uh, I will be putting uh, multiple images of these on the, on the ROM just to fill it out. And also very nice on this board 
are the jumper configurations. So it's already set up so that you can configure jumpers for uh, either the 24 pin chip or you can use one of the 27C series uh, 28 pin chips just by changing the locations of the jumpers on the board. The way that I chose to go about this was actually to clip off one side of each of the jumpers and just bend them around and solder to the other pads. So I didn't actually remove the jumpers uh, from the through hole positions they were in. I just simply uh, bent them around and resoldered the other end and then installed my new ROM chip. This has really been a super easy process on this particular Coco 2. So we'll get everything put back together and it will be time to test out our work and make sure that we now see our extended color basic. And there we go. That's what we wanted to see. So we have extended color basic 1.1 and that uh, is perfect. And now I'm going to do a quick memory check and what's interesting about this is we actually lose some memory uh, to basic because the extended color basic is actually using about another 8k of memory. We actually have less available to basic than we had with just the straight color basic 1.3. All right, it's time to put this thing completely back together again, and I'm going to connect up a cassette, and we'll load a program really quickly on this, and really the only reason I'm doing this now is I realized that in the last video where we fixed the keyboard, I never fully tested the system in terms of looking at the cassette port and seeing that it could actually load a program. So I thought I would just connect it together, do that, and now I can have kind of a full check of the entire system. I can recheck my keyboard and I can also make sure that the cassette is operating as well and get some graphics displayed on the screen. Maybe in a future video I'll do a little bit of a comparison between regular Tandy Color Basic and Extended Color Basic and this is something I'm just sort of learning about myself right now. I'm not super experienced with Extended Color Basic, so it's going to be fun to see what new options are available to me um, since doing this upgrade. And there we go. We have our blinky face uh, from the Coco 1 video. The next thing to do to this Coco will be to get rid of the RF output for video and to find a mod where we can at least get composite video out. I know there are a number of ways to do this, and it's time for some research. But until then, I want to thank you again for watching, and we'll see you next time.